Hello, my name is Jeff Christians, and I'd like to discuss a recent publication from the Prashant Kamat group entitled Rate Limiting Interfacial Hole Transfer in Antimony Sulfide Solid State Solar Cells, recently published in Energy and Environmental Science. Antimony sulfide is a promising material for solid state semiconductor sensitized solar cells. It has a band gap of 1.7 eV, which allows for absorption across the entire visible spectrum. And these sensitized solar cells can be constructed with simple, cost-effective solution processing techniques. Currently, power conversion efficiencies of these antimony sulfide solar cells remain low, ranging from 3 to over 6%, still below that of commercial devices. To improve this power conversion efficiency, an understanding of the basic charge separation process in these solar cells is critical. In sensitized solar cells, unlike PN junction devices, charge separation is achieved by rapid electron transfer into a wide band gap material such as titanium dioxide and hole transfer into a liquid redox couple or solid hole conductor. Previous studies of liquid junction CDSE sensitized solar cells have shown that slow hole extraction can limit the solar cell efficiency. Therefore, it is important to understand the charge separation mechanism and rate in these antimony sulfide solid state solar cells. In this work, we investigated the hole transfer between antimony sulfide and copper thiocyanate using femtosecond transient absorption spectroscopy. We are then able to track trapped holes in the antimony sulfide layer of the solar cell. These trapped holes give an induced absorption response in the transient spectra, indic indicative of the sulfide radical species. We can then calculate the estimated hole transfer rate from antimony sulfide to copper thiocyanate by the difference in the rate of sulfide radical absorption decay with and without copper thiocyanate, as shown in the figure below. To study the role of antimony sulfide in this hole transfer process, we looked at six different TiO2 antimony sulfide films with thicknesses of the antimony sulfide layer ranging from 20 nanometers to 130 nanometers. When copper thiocyanate is not present, we find that these films all behave very similarly and can be modeled using the identical lifetimes and weighting with only different signal magnitude. The three lifetimes obtained correspond to the absorption growth due to the hole trapping process and a short and long decay attributed to the decay of two distinct trapped hole or sulfide radical species. After the addition of copper thiocyanate, these films all behave very differently than before and each other. We fit the observed transient kinetic data of the films after hole trapping to a bi-exponential decay. From this, we're able to calculate the estimated hole transfer rate for each antimony sulfide thickness. We find that the estimated hole transfer rate decreases nearly an order of magnitude as antimony sulfide film increases from 20 to 130 nanometers, a trend which we attribute to trapped holes needing to diffuse through the antimony sulfide layer before they can be transferred to the copper thiocyanate. Next, we developed a model to describe the dynamics of hole transfer for all antimony sulfide thicknesses. We assume the hole transfer rate is affected by diffusion of holes in antimony sulfide and transfer of holes across the antimony sulfide copper thiocyanate interface. We then modeled this transfer by Fick's law of diffusion. There are several major assumptions on which this model is based. We assume holes in antimony sulfide travel by a random walk. We assume that transfer to TiO2 cannot occur and that transfer to copper thiocyanate is pseudo first order. Also, we assume that recombination acts independently of diffusion and transfer and homogeneously throughout the antimony sulfide film. This differential equation can then be solved analytically and we arrive at the expression shown here for the transient absorption response. This takes film thickness into account and depends on two variable parameters, the hole diffusion coefficient D and the interfacial hole transfer coefficient Ki. 
This solution is then used to fit the experimental transient absorption kinetic data by varying these two model parameters. By this method, we are able to accurately capture the whole transfer dynamics of all antimony sulfide film thicknesses and determine values of D and Ki. Perhaps more importantly, we're able to, deserve, to observe the interplay between diffusion and interfacial transfer through the calculation of the whole transfer BO number, which is the ratio of, between diffusion and interfacial transfer in the system. The calculated whole transfer BO number is less than 1 for all cases. This tells us that diffusion and interfacial transfer, while they occur at similar rates, interfacial transfer is actually the slower of the two processes. The previous analysis is based on the assumption that we can model both diffusion and interfacial transfer and that both of these processes are important to the whole transfer process because they happen at similar rates. More commonly, it is assumed that interfacial transfer is the much faster process than diffusion, so that all transfer limitations are ascribed to diffusion alone. To establish which model is correct, we compare the results of this diffusion-only model to our previous diffusion transfer model we find that the diffusion-only model does not capture the dynamics as well at the extreme antimony sulfide film thicknesses, and it, furthermore, it predicts an increase in the apparent diffusion coefficient with antimony sulfide thickness. Taken together, these results confirm our diffusion transfer model as they are consistent with interfacial transfer hole limitations, which become more apparent in thinner antimony sulfide films. The apparent diffusion length calculated by this diffusion-only model combines the effects of diffusion, interfacial transfer, and recombination into a single device-specific parameter. This parameter, the apparent diffusion length, is useful for estimating the productive absorber thickness of the actual device. This is the thickness of antimony sulfide where there is a balance between light absorption and hole extraction. From the apparent diffusion length, we can estimate the productive absorber thickness in this system to be 50 nanometers. To determine the applicability of the previous measurements to the performance of antimony sulfide photovoltaics, we constructed a set of planar TiO2 antimony sulfide copper thiocyanate solar cells with increasing antimony sulfide layer thickness. As predicted by the productive absorber thickness, the highest external quantum efficiency is seen for the solar cell with a 45 nanometer thick antimony sulfide absorber layer, confirming that this is the ideal balance between photon absorption and hole extraction. By comparing the internal quantum efficiency, or the absorbed photon to current efficiency, with the hole transfer efficiency at, that we measured by transient absorption spectroscopy, we see that both of these parameters have a similar slope. From this, we conclude that hole transfer efficiency is very important in dictating internal quantum efficiency of these solar cells. However, the lower internal quantum efficiency in all cases implies that other factors, such as back electron transfer, inefficient charge collection, and inefficient electron extraction also contribute to the low internal quantum efficiency. In summary, we find that hole transfer rate between antimony sulfide and copper thiocyanate is limited by both diffusion in the antimony sulfide layer and interfacial transfer. And we can observe the relative contribution of each of these processes by calculation of the hole transfer BO number. Because high efficiency antimony sulfide solar cells employ mesoporous TiO2 substrates and sub 20 nanometer antimony sulfide films, we calculate the BO number of these to be less than 0.1. Therefore, we conclude that the whole transfer in these solar cells is, is primarily limited by interfacial transfer, not whole diffusion in antimony sulfide. In addition, we provide a measurement of the whole mobility in antimony sulfide in a system closely resembling that of the actual photovoltaic device. And we give an estimate of the productive absorber thickness that is confirmed by photovoltaic measurements. 
I would like to thank you for watching this webinar presentation on our paper, Rate Limiting Interfacial Hole Transfer in Antimony Sulfide Solid State Solar Cells. You can find the complete manuscript online published in Energy and Environmental Science. For more information on our research group and our other work and events, visit KamatLab.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Thank you.